You want all the GPUs, you get all the GPUs. Samsung gets hacked by the same people who hacked NVIDIA. Apple is buying NFL stuff, and you want a whole bunch of CPUs from AMD? Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And we're gonna start off talking about the for the first time in 24 years, if you wanted three companies launching GPU products roughly in the same time span, well, well let me welcome you to 2022, because that's essentially what's going to be happening with Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA all gearing up to actually release GPUs this coming few months. It, it was anticipated that Intel, who is kind of the shakiest one right now, was supposed to have their GPUs out by the end of Q1 2022. There's rumors coming out that behind the scenes, they might not make that deadline, but it should be within, you know, April, May timeframe. But we're also looking to get the RTX 3090 Ti with new rumors coming out that that should launch on March 29th. In case you weren't following along, the 3090 Ti was too hot and bad and NVIDIA couldn't make it. And there's thoughts that they might cancel it for good. But the cancellation is actually going to the 3070 Ti with 16 gigabytes and not the 3090 Ti. But then we're also supposed to be getting an AMD refresh this coming April with the six blank 50 XT variety. So 60 950, 6850, as well as potentially the RX 6500. So all of these GPUs are supposed to launch by the end of this month to sometime in April or beginning of May. Within the next three months, we might see launches. Obviously, this is not new architecture. This is not necessarily changing the game of anything except for Intel's launch. I'm really excited to see what that's capable of, but the refreshes and all that, but it, it's just good that we have competition, that there's stuff happening at the same time we're rolling out new GPUs, I'd like to see it. I can't wait for all of this to happen. Let me know, out of all the GPUs that are supposed to be launching, which one are you most excited for? And Samsung might not be excited because they got lapust or lapsust, however you want to pronounce it. They were hacked by the same hackers that NVIDIA got hacked by, but currently there's no report that Samsung has hacked the hackers like NVIDIA hacked the hackers after they got hacked by the hackers who have now hacked Samsung, but Samsung having roughly 200 gigabytes of compressed data stolen from their servers which has tons of information related to a whole bunch of security things like uh, the Knox authentication code, biometric unlock algorithms, bootloader codes, trusted applet source codes, code behind online services, and Samsung accounts. Samsung straight up not having a good time with all of these leaks dropping. So LaPus disclosing all of the stuff that they have with regards to Samsung. It seems like this hacking group is really making its waves around the big tech scene right now. Whether or not they're going to continue to hack more, maybe they found a vulnerability that kind of can be rolled out to a whole bunch of different companies remains to be seen, but it's not good either way. And we talked about on Friday how the hacker group gave NVIDIA an ultimatum, told them to make their op drivers open source or they were going to release a whole bunch of stuff. It, there's no information as of the time of filming whether or not NVIDIA has acquiesced to the hackers, even though that would probably be good for the consumer overall. You know, not negotiating with people who are holding you hostage, probably a good thing. But NVIDIA employees finding out that their uh, credentials have been leaked 71 thousand employee credentials appearing online being confirmed by have I been pwned that it includes email addresses and TLM password hashes with many of those being cracked after this came out. So it's not just enough that they got Nvidia's data. They also are exploiting the employees security on that side. But then it was reported that there were signing certifications that came out for Nvidia drivers onto Windows. However, those are both expired, but it could still mean that Windows might use them for driver signing purposes, which could be bad because it would tell your computer, hey, you can trust this, when in reality, you can't trust it, not even a little bit. Not a good time. Don't download shady links. You're your number one antivirus. And I fix it seems to be the number one place where you're going to be able to buy spare parts for all of the tech things that are out there. Microsoft announcing a partnership, Valve announcing a partnership for the Steam Deck, and it's coming out that we should have replacement parts for the Steam Deck available on iFixit store by sometime this summer. Whether or not you're actually going to have your Steam Deck by then remains to be seen. I still don't have a release date for mine. You know what? I haven't checked it this weekend. Let me go ahead and check my release date. Yeah, mine's still saying after Q2 2022. I'm still sad, but I'll be able to buy stuff from my fix it, whether it be thumbsticks, SSDs, possibly more, according to the Valve's official report, which is a whole host of things that are great to have on your Steam Deck. You know what else is great to have? Crypto stonks, the segment at least. Bitcoin whoo, suffering just a little bit, down 2.86% in the last 24 hours to be at 38.462. In case you remember, last week it went
went over $40,000, especially with all of the Russian invasion nonsense that was going on. It appears to have tapered off to be before Russian invasion levels. Ethereum also down 4.6% to be at $2,500. Again, it's actually lower than it was pre-invasion levels. Dogecoin down to 12 cents, down 4% on the day, also below pre-invasion levels. But what's not down is up. Good thought, Brett. Apple looking to go up with their purchases of potentially getting NFL Sunday ticket. I know, I know this is not necessarily tech news. It's just something that I thought was really exciting. Apple looking potentially to buy out NFL Sunday ticket from DirecTV, who pays roughly $1.5 billion per year in order to have the rights for this. If Apple were to acquire this and have all of that stuff added in, it might be costing them $3 billion per year. But as somebody who is never going to sign up for DirecTV, TV, and this would give me access to more football, I would actually be in favor of Apple taking this over. Obviously, it creates this whole like super mega conglomeration corporate tech knockalypse that's happening, but I could watch football better than just having to buy like YouTube TV or something. Hopefully it's like rolled into Apple TV. I don't know. If you're a football fan, let me know what you think of Apple potentially picking up NFL Sunday ticket down below in the comments. But another unlikely partnership, Sony and Honda merging together to produce electric vehicles. They have a memorandum of understanding that they're gonna make EVs together, starting to sell their first vehicles by 2025. This is actually kind of good because Honda hasn't really been putting out a whole lot of plans with regards to EVs. They have some really good fuel efficient regular combustion vehicles, but nothing really in the way of EV. So seeing them partner with Sony, who has had like prototypes that they've shown off at CES, I like this partnership. I want to see where it goes. And another unlikely partnership, console cloud gaming with keyboard and mouse. xCloud going to be getting keyboard and mouse support sometime soon, June or so, according to the people who know these things. And who knows things about NFTs? I thought NFTs stood for no freaking thanks. Anyways, ASRock T a motherboard that's going to be with an NFT. There's going to be an NFT edition of the Z690 PG Riptide. In case you don't remember, ASRock actually released an NFT over on OpenSea previously. They minted a hundred of them. The average selling price appears to be within a couple hundred dollars. It's kind of, I don't know exactly if ASRock made a ton of money off of the NFT project or if it really went the way that they wanted it to. But with the motherboard NFT, they're going to have it so that the community is going to give design inputs on the motherboard and then it's going to be turned into an NFT, which you could then potentially purchase in case you want that. It's going to be sweepstakes, but not you, you don't get the NFT if you buy the motherboard, which that's how I would think it would work. I don't I don't, I don't know. What do you think of NFTs and computer companies merging together? Let me know down below in the comments. I'm going to let you know that AMD is looking to launch a lot of CPUs. We talked last week about how the 5800X3D finally looks to be coming out, but it looks like AMD might have other CPUs up their sleeves, especially now that they're feeling the competition from Intel. Four different CPUs in the month of March, the Ryzen 5 5500, six cores and six threads, the 5600 non-X getting six cores and 12 threads, likely going to be a 5600G without that integration. A GPU, a Ryzen 7 5700X, and then that 5800X 3D. The 5500 is allegedly going to be the same price as the i3 12100. 5600 will be cheaper than 12400, and the 5700X will be cheaper than the 12600KF. Are you excited for more budget AMD CPUs? I think it's about time. That's an area where Intel has been slapping them in the face over and over again. Is that like sub $250 market? AMD really hasn't been competitive there. I would would like to see this happen let me know what you think down below and i'm letting you know this episode's hot hot news over we'll see you tomorrow for more hot tech news on the internets cheers